This video is a step into my world, shoegaze and dream pop. Hi, I'm Sam Mortley, and I'm, I'm a musician, 28 years of age, from Plymouth, Devon, Plymouth, England, United Kingdom. I've been making songs since I was 21, I've been playing guitar since I was 16. To speak about shoegaze, you really have to start with dream pop, the genre that started in the 80s and it introduced an impressionistic style, it first adopted, uh, established by the Cocteau Twins, with Garland, albums like Treasure, uh, Heaven or Las Vegas, and The Cure as well, a massive dream pop artist, as well as being a darker post-punk goth artist. A modern day version of The Cure and Cocteau Twins would be pale waves uh, to, an, to an extent. Other modern dream pop acts include Suburban Living, Always, with the two V's in it, and Beach House. Shoegaze equals beautiful noise, a swirling melancholic cocoon of experimental guitars soothing the listener. Sonic Youth, noise veterans from New York, really messed with tunings introducing alternate tunings and uh, tremolo picking, uh, tremolo strumming that really um, showed how noise could be done in a beautiful way as opposed to an aggressive way like you hear in metal. The Jesus and Mary Chain from Scotland, uh, Saku Candy 1985, their debut album was a, a complete landmark album uh, produced by Alan Mulder who went on to produce the next band, My Bloody Valentine. Uh, it, they had an album called Isn't Anything in 1988 which really shifted boundaries combining gothic rock with alternative rock. Following Isn't Anything of 1988, Kevin Shields took it a step further with his glide guitar technique, a new phenomenon in guitar playing. On the Glider EP of 1990 and the Tremolo EP of March 91, they then went into hibernation. It took one and a half years at least and £250,000 of Creation's money to record Loveless. Here's Alan McGee talking about the final product. It's totally deserves its moment, you know what I mean? In the movie, there's, I'd forgot, he banned me for the studio, right, you know, so I, he, I, although I was paying for it and I'd spent like a quarter of a million on the album, I used to show up and try and get in and he'd tell me to fuck off. But well, actually, he didn't even tell me to fuck off, he got the engineer to tell me to fuck off. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was a painful record to make, but it was maybe one of the best records I've ever put out, you know, I mean, definitely one of them. Might have even been the, the best one, I don't know, you know what I mean? Brilliant record, do you know what I mean? Okay, we'll take a couple more questions. Formed in Oxford in 1988, Ride were influenced by the Stone Roses, 60s rock, psychedelic rock, and My Bloody Valentine and Sonic Youth. They were a much more poppier version of My Bloody Valentine and kind of were in the middle of the Stone Roses and My Bloody Valentine. Um, they had a really great 12-string um, Rickenbacker sound, um, brilliant harmonies um, between Andy Bell and Mark Gardner. Um, they were the first band for creation to break into the top 10 in the charts with Leave Them All Behind. Uh, the Jerico Tavern was a, a venue in Oxford that really started the careers of Radiohead, Ride, Swerve Driver, Supergrass, um, a lot of those bands. Um, they are still going today, they released um, Weather Diaries in 2017 and this is not a safe place in 2019. Live at Reading is an essential DVD slash CD to get, um, just CD. Nowhere is their big album, and Going Blank Again is their second album, which is really worth checking out. I actually met uh, the members, all four members of the band outside a gig in Oxford in 2019. That's me with Andy Bell, and that's me with Mark Gardner. Now, as good as the front men are, um, it's the, really the drummer that steals the show, Lawrence Laws Colbert. 
is his name and he is an exceptional drummer I think he's the most underrated drummer of all time and that's no exaggeration Formed in Reading in 1989, Slow Dive are another one of the big three bands of shoegaze, with Ride and My Bloody Valentine being the other two. Now you can probably see a theme going on. These bands are mostly from the Thames Valley area, which is um, what was called the scene that celebrates itself, which is like another, like an AKA, also known as kind of name for shoegaze. The scene that celebrates itself and that's me with Neil Halstead the main songwriter and guitarist and that's me with Rachel Goswell the vocalist Other early 90s shoegaze bands worth checking out is Pale Saints, who had more of a dream pop sound. They were, they were on the lighter side of things. Graham Naismith and Ian Masters. Ian Masters had a choir boy voice, which was very unique, and Chris Cooper was an exceptional drummer, just like Lost Colbert. The Telescopes, another band worth checking out, formed in Chester. And Chapter House, uh, maybe the fourth or fifth biggest shoegaze band, also from Reading, just like Slow Dive. Uh, their World Whirlpool album is worth checking out with hits like Pearl and Breather on the, on it. 
Lush as well, another essential band from London, formed um, by two women, Mickey Berenyi, whose um, mother uh, played a part in a James Bond movie, the Japanese one, You Only Live Twice, and Emma Anderson. Uh, I met Mickey in 2019 and got her to sign Split, Spooky, and Gala, which uh, Gala is a compilation of EPs. Um, I also met Moose at that gig, who Moose McKillop formed the band called Moose, and um, they were the first band to get the label shoe Shoegazers after an article about them in the Enemy, I believe, or was it Sound? It's, it's one of them. Um, Swerve Driver, another band, they were a bit more on the grungy side of things, uh, but they still had enough. Uh, they have the theme of lots of reverb and if you go to one of their live shows there's, there's no question that they're a shoegaze band because if you have a look at their pedal boards it's just strewn across the stage absolutely amazing it's like two each uh, guitarist has like 15 it's like 30 pedals between them so they have 15 each so like 30 all together i've met adam franklin the front man a few times and he's as nice as pie very nice guy to meet and, and the top band. the iconic gigs of shoegaze was at the marquee club on 3rd of september 1991 where 
Chapter House, Slow Dive and Moose all played together. All of that footage and audio can be found online on YouTube. Curve and Medicine, they offer a, a, a dancey alternative, um, almost industrial um, in the way they produce their music. Um, two very underrated bands, Curve and Medicine. Um, the Czech scene was massive as well. Um, it just shows the influence really it, how it spread internationally not just in the UK but you had the Naked Souls, the Ecstasy of St. Teresa and here were a central Czech bands. Also it was massive in Japan uh, like um, Lemon's Chair, uh, Tokyo Shoegazer, bands like that. Uh, the gear is is always the Fender Jazzmaster. That is the number one guitar for shoegaze with its tremolo arm and its kind of EQ options with the uh, the switches. Um, also, Rickenbacker is very popular. Obviously, we ride. They were the poster boys for the Rickenbackers, uh, especially the twelve string ones. Uh, Fender reverb amps as well as the Roland JC one twenties uh, were very popular. Uh, Yamaha Rack FX, Yamaha FX five hundreds, Elise's quadra verbs and midi verbs um, the Roland GP16 all the central rack effects the fashion it was always stripy baggy uh, lots of coats being worn like Nick McCabe from, from the verve and that uh, 4AD and creation records they were the two labels really that housed most of these bands as well as Hutt's recordings which was a subsidiary of Virgin records uh, Aston, Martin Aston's book um, worth checking out for 4AD info. I met Adam McGee at one of his speeches in Exeter in 2019, about an hour up the road from where I live. Um, I had to travel from Plymouth to see him. It was really interesting what he was saying about the, the stories of the House of Love, who were like, what was it quite interesting? Hey, the ones at the back. Hi, Hi Alan. Um, well, what, what do you think about the success of the um, Reunions of all your shoegazing bands like uh, My Bloody Valentine, Slow Dive, Ride, Swerve Driver, The Telescopes. Yeah, they've all come back really strong, haven't they? Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, yeah, I mean, I do, do you know what the thing is? They're all sort of career bands, if you want to call it that, right? But they, they were so not about the career, on that, which is maybe why they've all ended yeah. up very, very, very but successful indie bands, aren't they? Mm. Um, and I think that's beautiful, don't get me wrong, I'm not down on that. But when I met all these bands at the beginning, I was used to say, oh, we've got to get the charts, we've got to do this, we've got to do And they didn't give a mm. fuck. None of them did, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of fascinating that all these bands now are all quite into being successful, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, they've left a big legacy, haven't they? Yeah. They're really, really influential, yeah. That's good, man. Yeah, yeah totally legend. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. So Alan McGee c concluded that they weren't really singles bands, they were much more about the albums. And two m producers really, that producers and mixers that stand out for me is Alan Mulder and Robin Guthrie. Um, obviously, a lot of shoegazes to do with the order of the signal chain of effects and uh, people like Alan Mulder and Robin Guthrie really uh, cemented that and really built upon that to create incredible sounds. Uh, still going strong today. I mean, guys like Ringo Death Star, uh, Color Trip from 2011, you've got Pure Mood from 2015, all essential albums. Rum Skibs 2007 self titled album is, a, is essential. Uh, Sway, the Milia Pink and Green album from 2003. Fall is a great track. Exit Karma, a modern. Uh, UK band um, through the 2010s, I think they were only around for five years or something. I really like the song Awake. Ariel, uh, the Wicks and Kisses EP from um, 2004, that sort of they did a selection of EPs which were really incredible. Uh, Jeremy Wren is a genius. Uh, Dive uh, came out with Deceiver in 2019, which was much more of a fuzzy. Um, raspy guitar kind of affair co compared to the earlier stuff which was much more post-punk slash dream pop 
and there's me with my best mate Martin Martin Lay from Plymouth and this is the concert I'm going to attend so keep on shoegazing thanks for watching cheers <laughs>